recording. Okay, Brian. Um, uh, to your argument of being ready, like in a year or two, <clears throat> that we have a cold start problem here. That's what exactly what we're trying to to address. So it's like, no, it's not. If you think that's a that's a reason for not doing it, that's not a reason. We need to address the cold start problem. Like you said, we'll, we'll be ready in like a year. Well, no, that's the whole point. In a year, we're not going to need the money. Um, just to clarify, I mean. How do, how do we see the apprenticeship turning out? The critical moment is the end of November and December this year, where we're going to build, plan on building three houses. And actually, uh, interesting update on that. Uh, we got kind of depressed after seeing some of the thousand square foot prices. Well, no, no, not that, not not the prices themselves, but the fact that there's a very small, there's about a one sixth of a market for one thousand. Uh, by, just by virtue of the fact that one sixth of the people have like are a couple without children and stuff like that. So that's that, and when we looked at the comparative prices, there were eight houses sold over the last year that were, did I tell you this last week? No, did I? No. There were eight houses in St. Joe that sold at a thousand square foot kind of uh, size range, and all of them on average, so on average they sold for 140, and on average they were 100 years old. Nobody builds a thousand square foot houses. And we kind of knew that, right? Okay, so then we go to two. Yeah. We actually start considering seriously for a two thousand for a, one of the builds. So we'll do one one thousand, one two thousand. And actually, the first so I went to visit St. Joe. <laughs> the first thing the guy said before you buy land, let me just give you a lot for free. So actually, that's worth pursuing. <laughs> the, the city planner guy says, oh, let me just get you a lot here. Uh, thanks. So I mean, the the support is overwhelming. Um, Berkshire Hathaway Housing Services, which indirectly gave us the, some of the funding here, uh, they're very helpful. They're, they're like all excited about this affordable housing stuff. We have really good buy-in over there, so we should probably pursue the the free lot and free labor if people, you know, like churches and stuff like that, probably. But anyway, so the three builds planned for November, December. Now. What's the economic look, economics look like? So once we, if we prove a sale point of 140 for 1,000 square feet, and for the free lot, the sale price, if you assume free labor, is 80 in a sustainable business model. That means all I see is getting paid. Therefore, we can sustain that. Uh, in fact, it's uh, we'd be charging like a a standard fee which would be $17,000, and end up with a house at 80K, using free land, free labor. So, so there's a great possibility. Okay, now, but let's let's fast forward to the apprenticeship next year. What, what's it look like? So I'm, I'm explaining that, why I don't think we're gonna need the money, and well, of course we can use money anytime, but why we won't need it as much in a year or two. But the, the first thing is, we start the apprenticeship, we're probably off the street because of our breakthrough collaborative manufacturing, our swarm builds, off the street, we're at one third the the final rate, professional rate. I mean, we've seen that. We basically see that if a professional could do it in one X time, <clears throat> a novice, because we, we lay out good instructions and all that and simple techniques, takes about three times. Uh, the double double the time comes from you got to teach them, and a third of the time is you know people just bullshit around. And they they're slow, you know. So, but realistically, that still means that we're getting 25k a sale like off the street as soon as we start the apprenticeship if we have on the job training. Like here we started right on the job, uh, 25K every three weeks. And after six months, that's expected to end up at 25K a build. I actually think it's gonna, um, 25K, yes, per build, meaning per week. Now actually I've, I've been looking at the numbers and, and I'm actually even more optimistic. I think we can build one of the houses in, in 500 hours. So that means two houses per week. Why did I say 500 hours? So I looked, looked into jigs. Like I was thinking, oh cool man, like imagine we had to do no thinking, like when we're building all the modules, imagine you have, check, check this out, like even as simple as a piece of plywood four by nine, it's got little posts in the corners where you just basically lay the lumber in. I mean, it's all pretty much, if it's a door, if it's, a, it's another one, you just pretty much drop the lumber in there in pre-cut lens shouldn't take more than 20 minutes per, per wall module at the framing level plus OSB. It's like, it's gonna be insanely good. So we're gonna deliver. I'm, I'm pretty confident of, after looking at some of this and kind of finishing up the electrical and stuff like that. So 
once we get going, like at the six month mark, I'm expecting at least 25K a week. I'd like to see, that, let's, let's even just say 25K a week, but that's 100K a month. I, I really think it will be 200K a month. Um, based on what we're, what we're learning here. So, in other words, like in a year, we're, we're not going to have that kind of issue for me, but right now it's to, to get there. Uh, in the training program, with, if we started as we are right now without r rapid learning, uh, what's the rapid learning? Basically, the facility, we've got like 12 different bays where you learn a topic in each base. It's really well organized. Because actually what we learned in uh, last year's Summer of Extreme Design Build was that surprisingly, there was one day where people like, Wow, this was the best day in the whole in the whole program, and that was the day we did the power cube, where we basically, from an existing one which was pretty much ready, like everything, like all the parts were prepared, we basically put assembled it, put it in a frame, and had this power unit built in like four hours with the guys that were there, like six guys. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. We, they felt like they built it built it all, but really it was a lot of preparation that went into it, and that's what I mean by. Uh, they got the learning, but they got it without having to sweat like for a whole week to, to actually learn it by building it from scratch. So, so that's that rapid learning thing where you have a lot of pre a lot of well prepared stuff that allows you to just like dive right in. And you feel this this sense of oh wow I did it, even though it's cheating, but you feel the same. You feel like you completely did it yourself, and the guys reflected it saying that was like the best day in the program. Whereas a lot of the other stuff we kind of just did from scratch and you know just yeah. really take B O M from you know from uh, supply stores. So anyway, uh, that's that's kind of my lead into this discussion. Just to appreciate the economics. So, I mean, I think those, that one million to two million per year economics are very realistic. I mean, I, I'm betting on that for one year from the t start of the apprenticeship. And so, do you see your organization as both the educator and the builder? Yeah. Like yeah. At I mean, scale. Yes. Like so, you don't you don't see a separation from, like, you know, like the employer. Well, our a separate company that's kind of like doing like the sales and the marketing well, of there, the house. There's also going to be open enterprise and open franchise where anyone can do this, but for the heavy lifting which is, for example, showing that 25K a week or 50K a week per week number that's replicable. This is not one, we're not designing this for one-off. We're saying we're designing it for that. So anyone who's ambitious, they take that, but we teach you and you can do it. The heavy lifting is to show that 50K model. So I'm answering your question. The next heavy lifting is going to be we show the same model with CBs. And the next heavy lifting is going to be with CBs and 3D printed parts, where altogether we've got bill of materials cost instead of 60k for the 1,000, it's 30k. And I actually went through those numbers. The 30k is quite realistic. So we're, once again, breakthroughs unlike anywhere. But we have to do that heavy lifting. We're welcome to for anyone else to do the education. Now that heavy lifting model involves the fact that we're training people and proving that with an actual build. So we have to do, I think, by design, we really have to be the education and production organization, which is always how I present it. Like when we're doing uh, extreme builds of the house, you're getting educated and you're building something amazing. Does that answer it? But a lot of I other think so. organizations, once we prove that, dole this out so every single tech school in the, in the world is doing this. That's where that's going to go. You see, you see yourself as the educator and the employer long term. Yeah, but we're more the more the proof of concept kind of guy. We're more like an incubator because we're incubating these so crazy open source company starts and they take on the the house building. Absolutely, I mean that scale. Be, but yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like the thing that and that's I, what I was saying is like. It seems to me the way I read the grant opportunity, and I think we're talking on two levels. One is just like in general at OSC at large, and like you know the opportunity, and the other is like with respect to this specific um, grant. Yeah, it seems to me that the grant is like a traditional workforce development concept, which is training and education, and then employment kind of is like that 
in preparation for an actual hire or employment. Nobody and because we're not, them. huh? Nobody's going to hire them. They, they can go to regular tech school to get hired elsewhere. They don't I know. need the, the integrated skill set. They just get the regular shit and, and they go do business as usual. We're doing something completely different in my view. It's highly integrated and they don't need us to train them to get hired elsewhere because nobody else is building the, the, the house we were building. In fact, they're highly against that. They're saying, no, 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 you can't cut out all these middlemen. You got to employ everybody. There, this is going to be a lot of friction. There's, I don't see that happening. We're too innovative. That's what I was saying. But you're also early. You know, like yeah. you, you, you need a, a few more houses and a few more employees. You know, maybe like I think in order to get a grant like the one that we're discussing with the ARPA workforce development one. So I think I think we should just move on and find another grant that is a little less I don't I don't think it's the right thing for you at the moment because well, I mean, they're it's it's kind of like apples and oranges. Well, and I mean, this, as far as among like the hiring of your trainees and so that's what I got out of it. I mean, you can disagree, but that's kind of what I. Uh, I I'm not. I'm not your logic. Uh, I mean, I, I don't understand what you're saying. We're we're training people, and we're going to hire them. This is workforce development. We're going to be the the workforce provider, provider of the workforce and an employer. I'm I'm not seeing what's what's missing. I just think that we don't. I I know that. I don't. I think what they're looking for are, is a company that will hire your your trainees. Yeah, I mean, if they're looking, and for that could be the open that. source, huh? Yeah, if they're looking for that, they, they probably wouldn't get that. We could, we probably won't deliver that. That's what I think they're looking for is, you're training it for a job, and in the future we could tell that story that the hiring the job is the open source company. But the open that, source. This housing grant, company john i mean my, my take was that this is completely uh, in sync with what this grant is asking for no <clears throat> yeah i'm lost here because it, if we run an apprenticeship by definition they're hired it just means that there's a a there's a timeline to their job as an apprentice but when your apprenticeship ends it doesn't mean that you're out of a job necessarily if we have a, if we are, are successful enough to run an apprenticeship that has multiple cycles over time, then it's presumably, it's reasonable to assume that we would then hire them afterwards. And if not, that time that they're in the apprenticeship still counts as a paid job that I think meets the intent of this project or the grant. And just to add to that, the, the very common sense thing would be if they're getting a high skill set, yes, they can be hired by somebody else, but I'm just saying I think that still is actually completely open. Like, say they wanted to work for a con concrete contractor or a framing crew or whatever, <coughs> or an uh, apprentice to some electrician or a PV installer, completely. Yeah, they could do it. I'm just saying they wouldn't need our training to do it, but they could actually do it. We're going to snap them up. They're too valuable for somebody else. Like, we're going to hire them. So I'm, I'm just saying, like, I, I don't see any... Um, any conflict in what, Brian, what you're saying? Uh, any conflict with respect to what this grant is offering and what we think we can provide? <coughs> Brian, if you need a minute to think about it, I, I can bring up a couple other points. I mean, I, I looked at the grant application and I I think it's a stretch for the for the reasons why I said, you know, because I, I think that they're you're a, you're a different animal. They're not going to understand it. And from as much as you might want to, like, I believe in what you're doing. And I think that we can raise money in a different way. I just think that this is going to be a lot of effort and not, and I don't know if we're going to be able to get the money out of it in the end. Because, because it's such a, you're, you're like, I don't think they're going to understand you. And I don't think we have enough sales 
to justify our assumptions around the um, the hiring that we want to do. Like if we had, if you had like 10 to 15 employees, you can make that case, but you don't, you don't have any. And I just feel like going from zero to, you know, hundred, they're not gonna, they're not looking, I don't know. I, I, I find it like a bit of a stretch from that side, that's all. And you can, I, I don't want, I would say if you really feel committed to it, despite my feedback, I would say go for it. I'm not gonna stand in your way. Um, no, but, but we were asking for your collaboration to bring in the partnership side, which would score high, which would make us score like up to 20 points higher. That's what we're asking. I mean, we can plot it out, but without the, we're, we're missing it. We're missing collaboration. Now there is, John, if you remember the, the one guy was talking about, talk to us, I forget who it was. It was at the turn of 2022, early in the year. There was one guy who, who had a reputable organization with some high-flying institution there that he was saying, yeah, get back to me on, like, we should talk about the workforce training, whatever. Like, there's different possibilities, but for me, it's like, uh, there'll be some legwork on, on our side, which we don't have immediately, and that's why somewhere we would need to, I, I feel we would have to find some collaborations. It could be that we're actually, calling that now that we have the St. Joe contacts, I actually do have city officials that could vouch for this, and we could go on collaboration through that, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, John. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think the only reason to not do this grant is if our time, our limited time, is better spent uh, on something else that will help achieve the November or December timeline for the first build. When is it due? October 29th. Like, like the way I see this is um, I completely agree that the, the grant reviewers are going to look at us and raise their eyebrows and like be confused. Um, a couple things that work in our favor though are the there's an actual registered apprenticeship tied to this. And so like any ambiguity about like what we're training people to do is lost. Because if the DOL says you're a registered, you're an approved sponsor for this registered apprenticeship, that is at that is uh, exceeding the standard relative to other organizations, unless they're actual big companies who are hire or training for specific roles in their company. Like that, that's the golden ticket essentially to prove that you're going to be a, a valuable employer. And any any uncertainty like on the part of the grant reviewers, I think I agree that it's a roll of the dice. And like to play devil's advocate about why you shouldn't apply is like we have a lot of startup costs that this doesn't solve because this is all reimbursement based so this presumes that we're successful setting up the apprenticeship we've got the proof of concepts Good done day. by 2023 um and we're ready we have the staff we're ready to run the apprenticeship as on paper so like this doesn't solve for that problem so this is more of like the next four you know addressing the next four years costs um <clears throat> but if we have the time required to fill out the application, I I think there is a also a like um, uh, like an efficiency here because the budget narrative itself will be useful. Like even if we don't it, the exercise of going through it, even if we don't get the money, I think is valuable for like the operational aspect of like getting from where we are today to breaking ground in November and December, and then turning that into the apprenticeship. So, my feedback on us on the minimum viable product is if, if we have no new infrastructure, we still have a 4,000 square foot workshop and a 4,000 square foot concrete slab. Uh, if people do not live on site, I see, I think we're completely legit in terms of infrastructure as long as people are not living on site. Right? So, we can turn a hab lab into basically a big classroom right now. <clears throat> Well, the cl the, we we are off the hook for classroom if we successfully partner with MCC. Yeah. So I mean, I think we're actually with MCC. Um, that could be our collaboration. There's that. There's City Saint Joe. If we want to go with, but I don't think this is 
fitting, right? But, it, but I mean, like, to Brian's point. It's a company point. partnership. Hmm? Sorry? It says, like, the, the 8.7 and the 8.3 is oh, what uh, I was saying. Let's see, can you put that in a chat, paste that into the link, chat box? Yeah, I can share my screen if you want. Right, yeah. Oh, wait, I need access. Uh, yeah, one second. Okay. This, this is, okay, so 8.3 with a company and focus around the company's specific training needs. So you're saying that you're the applicant and the company. And then yeah. down here, it asks for the company narrative, how the companies will engage and collaborate with partners at the proposed projects, uh, how the companies Yeah, I guess for additional context, when they did the webinar, um, there were representatives from companies whose intent was to develop a training program in-house with this money and then hire the people directly, like internally. And so it wasn't, I don't know if there's anybody on that call who were applying for this grant to, to solely train and then push the people out to get jobs elsewhere. But that's what I'm saying is like, I think the spirit in which workforce development is typically is that you're training someone to get a full paying job by a company and I think OSE is you're training somebody to get a paying job eventually if this startup works out or if and when you know like you're not ready to hire anybody because you need to sell you need you need to be a, a, a few notches down the road. So that's that's a kind of that's kind of the gap that I was seeing is like the train. I guess you could call the. I think ideally there would be another entity that is hiring, like the the education side and then the, you know, the job. If you if you want that to be the, if the. And it, it, you're saying that, that it was the apprenticeship. The apprenticeship is the job. Yeah, I mean, the th I, I don't. don't know how I don't know what that. I don't know that the that the apprenticeship is the is the type of workforce development that they were talking about. I thought they were talking about like an actual like job job. I mean, Brian, for what it's worth, I I brought. I, I described in detail what we were doing to the uh, like people who do the, the grant people who gave the webinar and they were very supportive. They, okay. they, they saw the apprenticeship aspect as a plus, not necessarily a minus. Um, you know. Okay, well. It, all, of, all of this nuance, I think, can be articulated in the narrative questions. Okay. Um, but again, like to me, the more fundamental question is, is, is it even worth our time? Because it doesn't solve the cold start problem. It doesn't give because us Because it's the, mostly for know, reimbursement, too, it's right? It's all for re reimbursement. Yeah, yeah, That so means like, you have to have... Expenses and receipts. Yeah, but and we would have, have, man, uh, cold, it doesn't... Uh, absolutely, it does not address the cold start problem. Uh, let's take a, a figure of March for an apprenticeship. No, that does right. not solve it. What it does solve is the rapid growth. This is how right. we get the, the CEB and 3D printing for for 50% material cost reduction. That's good. Right. That's two million. Um, now I no, said ten. Realistically, Marchin, you let's say that you have the 150k from Novo plus another 50. I think that that means that you have to. Okay, so let's say that there's $200,000 that we can ask for on this, but I don't see how we can ask for more because it's, it's we have to have the money to spend in order to get reimbursement. <laughs> oh, well, you're right. <laughs> but it, but the, the, the match, the, the requested amount can be, 
uh, three times. So like like the we have to have a twenty five percent match, right? And that that makes it exactly four million because I expect one to two million from OSC revenue net OSC net revenue next year. I think Brian, you, uh, for you, it's a far stretch to see the building model, but but we're not doing anything new. That's uh, one of the big points of OSC is that we never invent anything. We're just integrating existing known pieces. Like the concept of construction and building a house is not new. Even if we just went out on the market and did nothing different than anybody else, we could pay people. We wouldn't be able to pay as much. It would be better, I think. But here we're just saying we've done that and we have done modular, efficient, optimized, all of that. So, like to extrapolate to success, uh, don't see it as a far cry. And we could even, uh, if, it, if the deadline is November 1st, I mean, we can we can even say like these are projections, are projections which are based on well documented numbers in the industry. The only uh, to me there is no question in the model we had uh, the ridiculous high value for labor, which is like the only missing thing. But as far as the features and everything else, we're not doing we're, we're building a house. It's a well known product. So for which reason it's like this is not like you're saying oh like we got to prove this. I mean, we have to prove uh, operations and management. Yeah, yeah, that's that goes for any business. Yeah. Isn't isn't the right? Isn't the point of these grants to create things that don't exist already, though? Well, like I, I don't know. I, okay. I'm asking you. Like, uh, it'd be kind of silly if they only gave money to people who already had money. Technically, like, it's for COVID impacts of COVID on the economy. American yeah. rescue. It, it's related to COVID originally. Um, people whose operations got impacted by COVID or for vulnerable populations trying to get work, you know? So, like, I think they just care about. To me, at the. What made me feel off about it is at the end of the day, after all is said and done, someone's going to get a job and have a reliable job. And I didn't. Just because it, you know, if you feel, I don't know, I, um, we're still so early. That's all. That's all. But well, if if that's not true, sorry to interrupt. I, I just thought like if that's not true about what we're doing, then we're not accomplishing the like core of what this is supposed to be, right? I'm just saying that it can be true, but the time horizon is really was more what I was saying. Four years. The, the the grants designed to fund projects in the next four, like developing in the next four years. Okay. Well, okay. So the grant is it's in. Um, let me look at it again. For 2026. So three and a half years. So it sounds like y'all want to do the application no matter what. <laughs> it's not no well, I mean, we. we I think we're highly the, the, qualified. Uh, it, what, what about the reality check here of like, do you want to, is it, is it time we can afford to lose? Time, time yeah, and effort we can afford to lose? I mean, is that the, the issue? It's, uh, it's our time is so tight, therefore we think it's an opportunity cost. So is that basically the main reason? Because, um, I mean, that's, that's what I came to this meeting with saying, okay, do we, do we want, do we qualify here? And then I looked into some of it and it's like, First, I was like, let's score ourselves, and then we did, and I think the score came out reasonably high. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And what I was glad is that they gave you very explicit metrics for, for scoring yourself, which, which I think is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's unusual. We basically could attach a very explicit score to, okay, we think we're going to get exactly there, and therefore that motivated me to say, hell yeah, let's do it. 
Because because otherwise they could say they they mention no that and it's like okay it's a shot in the dark you know how are they going to score you here we know we're we're relatively high so that's kind of to address your your concerns like okay is there an opportunity cost is there something else we could do better I mean on once for the one like I haven't seen any other grants that give you I mean have you that that give you very clear point by point not just like Oh, we're, you know, we're we're generally sc scoring on these categories. They attach very explicit points, like broken down into five and ten points. That was that I thought was uh, unique. Is that unique, or or there's a lot of different grants that do that? A lot of the these government grants are do that. They yeah. they run by scorecard. Yeah, yeah. My my opinion is that. The questions that they ask are questions we should be asking ourselves anyways. And it's it's worth really thoroughly thinking through them. And there's enough, like my expected value of this is high enough to make it worth my, my time personally. Uh, and the biggest conflict that I'm concerned about is being able to break ground for November, December. Um, and whether or not that's, this is going to conflict with that. So that's where I stand. Pro application, I think it's worth it if it's not going to... No, I, and, and I'm, I don't think there's a problem if we delay the first breaking ground until next year. Next year, also. Like, I want I wanted to build the first two houses fast and prove the concept, but um, if we have to delay it... Um, and take our time to fill this grant. And I think that's worth it. Uh, that's where I stand. Yeah. My other question was though, is Outlaw's partner? Right. Yeah. So I think I think the answer to that question kind of depends on what we decide here today, obviously. But um, I we what we have to do is is identify needs uh, to turn this into reality, right? And included in that's going to be the administrative requirements, which of which I potentially might fall into. So I don't I don't have a number right now or like a uh a, like a data driven answer to what I can or should contribute and be like written into the grant for. I think that's going to be emergent of us identifying what our needs are and what roles I can fill realistically and what roles you actually like we have to build into the grant as people you hire. Yeah. I mean there's admin to, for reporting. That's I mean uh, yeah, as, I, well, as the yeah, overhead costs. Beyond that it's all right. going to curriculum. And training programs, rapid learning infrastructure. Brian, is that your main concern? So the opportunity cost here, or there's other stuff like other stuff that you, that you're not aware of or not saying. No, no, it was the main thing I said. That that was the main thing is the the track record of employees and the sales. That's it. I thought that mm -hmm. I think what they were I thought after reading it you know, at least that section of it around the company narrative, it's like how can we really we have to make the case that we're going to hire these people and that, you know, I think it's, um, I, I think we're, uh, that that was the main one. Other than that, if I think it looked fine. Yeah, but I mean, then you have to qualify. It, it, it's going to be a major effort. Um, right, but but then if we have the score, which was, John, what, what were the numbers there between 57 
and it, like six. I think I had it as. Hmm? Yeah, I think I had mine at 67, something like that. 67 out of 80, and I had like, I had potentially 67 pending partnerships. So for 67 out of 80, um, and still that accounts for that pretty low on uh, the track record, because we don't have a track record of, a speci of specifically of hiring apprentices, uh, like running a bunch of employees. So... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, so pass, I docked us for past performance, financial and participant tracking systems, and community of support. And you matching funds. For what? Past performance, financial and participant tracking systems, um, community of support, and matching funds. And the only difference between 67 and 50, uh, which is docking us for the same reasons, it's just going to us half points instead of zero. The only difference there is how you interpret the question um and how you answer the narrative so like for um past performance like i don't i don't discount the experience of osc with previous like training you know, you know extreme build weekends and all that stuff like very highly i think that's extremely valuable and it's an easy story to tell about past like the fact that motion is still on his two feet is like kind of remarkable. Um, but that could very easily fall on deaf ears if what they're looking for is we have employed X number of people, you know, and have X number of vacancies. But that's you know, what I thought that they would be going for. They, they might be, you know? Um, and so like the cost to find out again, you know, comes down to that time thing. I mean, the, you know better than anybody in this room about federal grants so like you know you, we could set up another call with the program officer and say look yeah this is our issue and i mean get their opinion yeah. now but even this, even without it if it's 67 out of 80 i mean that to me is um unless there's like tons of applicants i don't know do we think that 67 out of 80 if it's that does it or no, or that's like no, that's you really got to be more. Like It'll be than, lower if they're if they're. It, it just depends on the how they're judging us. If it's cut and dry, like we just said, then it'll probably be lower than that, like the fifty. If it's if it's if they're willing to be innovative and mm -hmm. look yeah. at the, then then it'll be higher, and then it's more likely. So maybe. Maybe we actually talk to them. I can set that up. Okay, let's do that. Um, that would give me a little bit more. It's kind of like where the wind blows on this one, you know, because we can spend a lot of hours on this application. I mean, these applications are, it's, it'll take a good week at least of like work. And that's all. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of um, yeah. That's what that would that would help us kind of assess it a little bit more. Yeah. That was my only concern is if they're you're very you'd be a very different applicant that is both the trainer and the employer and the employee deployment is more of a you know, thirty to fifty dollar an hour. It's not like a salaried position at a firm that has other employees. So it, no, it's not hourly. They'd it's, have to. It's hired, It's going to be hired for the apprenticeship. We're hired on people. It's not. It's not going to be part of the the core message was that we need a stable crew, so they're going to be hired for the year, like a year contract, at least. Okay. And then evaluate after. Yeah. But then, then again. So. But back, just back up a second what you just said. You also said now that we're different than other guys who are employers and trainers. According to John, that is not different. The different part is that we're the ones that don't have a bunch of employees already. Employees, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're the... Yeah. But I think that the thing is that the, the employer... You're you're more of a trainer than an employer, 
and they're more of an employer than a trainer is kind of what my intuition tells me. They're a major, they're a big company that has a bunch of employees and sells X amount and they're going to develop an, a training program. You're, you've got a training program and you're going to be starting with your first class of employees. So it's just, if we can start educating them, it's going to, and I think the call would be helpful anyways, if, because yeah. it's going to scratch, it's going to be head scratching anyways. So yeah. we, you know, you're going to have to feel them out. I think that's kind of where I want to, what point. I want to do. So, so let's, let's do that. that. And um, I, I think, think that's, that's, we're missing information right now. So let's, let's find it. It, there is a logistical problem here, which is you're going to be on vacation next week. Yeah. So you can do this. Can we just do this without him? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I Brian, so. you, you, Brian and I can hop on. Yeah, I mean, you, you've heard it. We know yeah. we're well aware of the question. Yeah. Right. And we can record and yeah. just share with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we, I'm not trying to get, you know, I'm not trying to block any application. I, I, I just think that it's the other thing that kind of was a little bit of a bummer. Of it. it's not, it's not just cash in hand. It's a reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So it's, it doesn't necessarily solve our problem. We could be sitting here with a reimbursement of a two million dollars, but we don't have the two million dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the time scales are okay for the reimbursement part. That's true. And it creates an incentive for more donations just to have that. Exactly. Um, now, I didn't... Bob Bob seemed to think that um, this... Like, it's kind of a stretch to combine it with the CCC. It's kind of a completely different thing. And to make it about OSC as the applicant application. And keep in mind, I haven't heard back from MCC either. So, like, there's that's still a potential in terms of collaboration for the application. I mean, we can say we're collaborating and just, you know, we don't have to make it the Kansas City Climate Corps and the open source ecology apprenticeship, you know, like the KCC is a little, I think it's just headed in a different direction. We talked about that last week, like the aquaponics. Mm -hmm. But I, I honestly, I'm not, I'm a little confused about the, the overlap. Is it a distraction to include the climate core because it's a completely different curriculum you can't just add in a house to all the tree planting and stuff yeah but we said it's aquaponics for the the house and it's landscaping so that could be an we can make that core features of the house that's the thing it's always integrate okay well then that's a that's a good way to do it i'm not i'm i'm down look we'll, we'll and through the application we'll get clear yeah. Yeah. And on our side, it's once again, this is productized. It's like, okay, this is cost that much money to give this much benefit, but it's actually a viable business model to do it. It could be, you've got the core house, you've got the, P now the PV is actually all the models in the ghetto, wherever we're going to be cleaning up the environment. Uh, then we can say, okay, now we've got aquaponics as options. We've got edible landscaping as options, et cetera. But they're attached to, to real numbers and real impacts. And you can say X but, tons Okay, of so you're, you're training. So it's not just about the house, the apprenticeship. But it is the house because it's part of our house is an integrated product. So, so it's, I mean, when I say house, I mean house, PV, closed loop water system, edible landscaping, aquaponics, Micro manufacturing in your garage, hydrogen production for distributed uh, fueling stations, because eventually we're going to get to hydrogen being produced by every house 
for your car. Okay. That's what I see. And then in your garage, you've got open source design uh, producing various 3D printed consumer goods. It's pretty easy. Like the open source Amazon store, the, that thing, open source everything store kind of deal. That I mean, that's the, the natural evolution. Like we're, we're literally like blowing this out of the wall, ballpark on reinventing how infrastructures are built. Yeah. But that's where, that's where we need to collaborate. Like that's where we need that big money to develop that curriculum because the thing, once again, the learning is that what we're doing requires a lot of, a lot of development for the integration part. <clears throat> And the curriculum that you would be covering, like w the partnership is that I would cover like the edible landscape part of the curriculum and you would cover the house and aquaponics side? Yeah, uh, it would be it would be about, I think the, the intent is really what you guys want to do as viable enterprises. I want to do all those things. I want to have the aquaponics added closed loop water systems and, and edible landscapes added to the house. So yeah, we're definitely going to want to do it. But for you to be motivated, you're going to have to have stake. You're going to have to want to do those things too for, for the overlap to be the best, for the collaboration to be incentive aligned because you care about the outcome of the product. I want the yeah. amazing edible landscapes possibly integrated with distributed urban gardening you know the thing where there's a lot of high value crops there from the microgreens to to regular greens i mean there's a incredible business opportunity that that's billions on you know just lettuce is like a billion dollar market that could you know start being coming from kansas city instead of california and stuff like that okay okay so we'll we'll get that question answered and then that will give us the next direction before before we go Brian off the top of your head are there times next week that make the most sense for you um, so I can propose some options uh, probably Wednesday morning so like 9, 9 a.m. CST-ish and on? Yeah. Okay. And like I'm still a little um, lacking on a clarity from John, of course, on role of outlaws. But the good news is that, of course, already that collaboration is there because you created the, the apprenticeship part. So, I mean, that's already there. I was just asking like more for how it goes in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I... I'm not, I'm, I, trust me, I'm not trying to dodge the question. I honestly don't know what the answer is because like you need, what, what I'm concerned about is telling you I'm going to manage something that I can't manage remotely. So, and, and I just, I, I don't, I don't want to leave you hanging, man. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. I thought that you were going to be the new proud owner of a seed eco home in St. Joseph, Missouri. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, if you can get the army to send my wife there, we're 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 on. Yeah, but by the way, Marchin, um, we we gave you a good plug with the city council member in Kansas City. And we told her about CD Cajon. She she really liked it, and she was really surprised. And we asked her. We said, well, actually, because of the city, we're actually going to be building this in St. Joseph and not Kansas City. And she was like. You know, she kind of took it in. <laughs> well, um, let me just say the FOMO will keep building once we show the project in St. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Seriously, that's kind of. I was amazed by the, the the warm reception in St. Joe, and the fact it was like, oh, cool that we we start there because we weren't uh, getting the same from like the you know the message from the city council there. You know, it was like they're kind of we're we're too big for you right now. Can uh, sorry, and then we have got. Have we heard from Novo? Not yet, but that's that's October. Should we read when they? October, they said they would uh, do the paperwork. Okay, okay, yeah. So it's all is good. But John, just I mean, remote. There's a lot of. I mean, we're, we're in a computer age, so remotely done all this stuff. Yeah. So far, I, I don't think that's an issue. 
Um, yeah, I, yeah you know, fundamentally, neither do I. I'm just, man, like, here's what I think we should do. I think we need to, like, say for administrative costs, yeah, like, here's what we think we need. And then if I can fill that role, I fill that role and I get reimbursed, you know? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Not a problem. Cool. All right. I'll set it up. All right, guys. Okay. Rock on. See ya. Have a great weekend. If I don't talk to you, March, have a good vacation, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Relax. Oh, a little kite surfing. I love it. Yeah. Okay, Rena said hi. Okay. Same. All right, bye, guys. Thanks. All right. Bye.